Landscape painters use nature for the reference material, and there are three ways to capture the images. You can paint live on location, you can paint from memory, or you can paint from photographs. This video deals with the latter and teaches you how to gather and prepare photographs that you can use for future paintings. Topics include choosing a subject, tips for conducting a successful photo shoot, evaluating and then reconstructing troubled compositions, and checking your composition with a value sketch. The goal for the process is to end up with a painting composition that has the greatest chance of success. We begin with choosing your subject because feeling inspired about what you're going to paint is critical. You have to feel passionate about what you're going to paint. It's your passion that will draw you into the painting and spurn you on to do your best. You'll also be more likely to convey feeling in the final painting. So where do you find inspiration? Well, sometimes you'll simply stumble across a scene that you want to paint. But if I don't have anything lined up in my queue, the first thing I ask myself is, what do I feel like painting? Do I want to focus on the landscape feature, such as a body of water? Do I want a more object-oriented scene, like focusing on a tree or a human structure? Or perhaps I'm just in the mood for conveying a broad vista, capturing an overall feeling or mood. Decide what you want to paint first, then figure out where you can go to get some related photographs. Many times, artists find their inspiration from scenes close to home. The reason, perhaps, is that we live with these scenes day in and day out. We see them through all the different seasons, and through every time of day. We discern when the lighting is just right, and we can grab our reference photos when everything in nature lines up to spark inspiration. Once you've decided on a location, grab your camera or your mobile phone and conduct a photo shoot. Now, what is a photo shoot? A photo shoot is just a segment of time in which you use your camera while out in nature to capture potential reference photos, photos you can use for future paintings. Let's look at a live example. In the springtime, my husband and I had gone for a drive on just some back road, and I, I saw this beautiful scene, took a few photographs, but I earmarked it and knew I wanted to go back, so this is the perfect opportunity. And here we are. What I really liked about this spot was how the two trees were situated and their very interesting forms. I loved the texture in the foreground and the line of trees that curve around to the right. The whole scene just struck me as having a lot of potential. You'll notice that it's late in the day. I chose that on purpose because I like the long shadows created by the sun as it sets. It adds drama. Also, the late afternoon sun has a warmer color temperature, a more golden hue, and I think that gives scenery a very inviting feeling. So now it's a matter of, let me get a bunch of pictures from different angles, and as you can see, we're walking around and looking at it from every angle I could think of. I wasn't really prepared to walk through the fields, but even just walking down the road a bit gave me a different perspective. In fact, I decided to walk beyond the initial boundary just to see if I was missing something. But that confirmed that the other angles were better. You can't even see the tree trunks from this side. Another thing to consider is when you have your camera facing towards the sun, objects become hazy. They tend to lose both color and detail. I decided to do one more sweep. And so what I did is I changed my camera settings, thought I'd take another walk, take some additional photographs, and this is what you do. You do whatever you can think of that would give you a different perspective. You never know one little change and it might give you that great photograph. 
When I come home from a photo shoot, the first thing I do is download my images and run through them to see if any of them jump out at me. I'm looking for something that strikes me. If one does, this is usually an image with the best chance of success. Then I load the best of the images into Photoshop and play around with the compositions. Let's walk through a typical reconstruction effort and discuss some of the reasons for my decisions. We're looking for how the scene leads the eye. When I got home, I downloaded all the photographs onto my computer. Now, I'm cheating a tiny bit, these photos are the ones I took in the springtime. But the images are similar. So let's take a look at the first one we have here. To me, it's a little clunky, but you do have a large center object, if you want to think of it like that. But I don't like the angle. It's dark, you're on the shadowed side of the trees. And the trees themselves just look a little messy. The next one isn't bad. I like the tree on the left. The way it sits with the other trees it creates kind of a triangular shape, which is nice. But that tree on the right, it's just not interesting and it's kind of ugly, so you would have to improvise and make some changes. And the foreground isn't terribly interesting. It's not the greatest picture. Let's look at the next one. This is pretty much the same view, but from further back. From this vantage point, the trees are still the focal point, but now there's background to support them. You have a nice open area with color on the left, and the foreground is more interesting. It forms a nice V-shape that leads you right to the center object, so it has a much better composition than the previous image. But the right-hand side of the scene is heavy and a bit awkward. It's throwing the scene off balance. I would crop it. If you take some of the weight off the right and lose some of the sky, trying to keep the clumps of trees off-center, you can end up with a fairly pleasing scene. Again, you're looking for how the lines in the picture lead the eye. When I look at this next one, my first thought is that it's too dark, so let's go ahead and lighten it. We'll bring up the lights and the medium values, and that helps. That's nice. You still have your beautiful tree in the front that creates a V shape, so that's your focal point. But it's awfully heavy on the right-hand side. The right-hand side has that dark area, and that just weighs it down. You could crop the picture. I like to take the top line and line it up with the top of the tree. And then we can lose a lot of the darks on the right. Already it's looking better. But you do have to reconstruct the horizon line because there's a lot of junk there. So it, this one needs a lot of work. This next one is basically similar to four, but it's closer up and it's brighter. It's not bad. Really, you've got your beautiful tree shape nice colors. I would move that barn to the left, or actually you could just eliminate it, which is even more pleasing. And if you wanted to, you could put a distant tree just to kind of balance it. Either way, with or without that distant tree, that's a much better design. It's very attractive. In this image, we have the focal point trees on the left side. When you factor in the trees on the right, it creates a triangular shape and successfully leads your eye from the two trees down the row of shaded trees and off to the right. Then the sunlight in the foreground leads you back into the scene. In addition, the two trees themselves have very nice lines. It's visually interesting looking. Now you also have some nice lines in the foreground that work well with the lines we just talked about. The foreground lines are created by the shadows. Everything's working really well with that focal point. I think I would just take a little bit off the bottom, as you can see, using the cropping tool. I'm also going to take a tiny bit off the right and then trim up the bottom like we have it. Now, just like the previous image, we're seeing that the tree trunks are lined up with the rule of thirds. 
Now I'm not glued to this rule or anything, but I find that even without this guideline, that's how my eye tends to set things up. I like this. We may choose this, but let's take a look at the last one we have. This is a nice looking composition. It has a lot of prospect. The first thing I did is took a little bit off of the right hand side and a tiny bit off the, the top using the cropping tool on my computer. And I want you to notice the nice diagonal lines that are going on. They take your eye right to the focal point, which is the tree. And I like the little branch on the side. It offers some visual interest. The foreground is very interesting with a lot of texture and a lot of different colors. It's a really attractive design. But all that said, I still prefer this one where the trees go to the right. Now there is one more thing to consider before moving on, and that is which photo shoot image to go with. The one from the spring on the left, or the one from the summer on the right. In the springtime, the leaves are obviously new, and therefore the trees are not as dense. On the right, in the summer photo, you can't see as much of the tree itself because of all the mature leaves. The other thing is look at the color tone of the trunks. Now part of that is due to how late in the day this photograph was taken. But look at the variation. The spring picture is much warmer. Also notice on the left of the tree, in the springtime, you have pink toned grasses and in the summer you have crops growing. I tend to want to go with the spring picture because I think it has a little more variation. The shadowed area is quite different. Again, you probably have crops growing there on the right, but on the left picture you still have some dirt. That's not necessarily pleasing, but again, it does offer color variation, and it helps balance the composition since you have the pink tones on the left. I'm going to go with this spring picture. It's part of what really drew me to the scene to begin with. It was so fresh and so spring-like. At this point, I feel like the composition is solid, but there are a few more tools we can use in order to prepare our mind and perfect the design. The first one is the application of the planes theory, and we begin with the sky, which as we know is typically the lightest value. Then you have your foreground, which according to the theory would be your next lightest plane, and that is correct. I think we could include that area on the left as well. Technically that's mid-ground, but it's the same value, so we'll put that there. And then on the right you have shaded mid-ground. It's not as bright as your foreground, it's, it's a little darker. It's not as dark as your perpendicular objects, which are the trees in the back. And you can see how much darker they are. In this picture, the sun is aiming from left to right. And so as a result, that's why the perpendicular objects on that side are darker, and it's why you have long shadows on the right. And that's also why the focal point, even though it's a perpendicular tree, is not the darkest value, because it is receiving direct light. So as we mentioned when we went through the planes theory, there are plenty of exceptions in nature. Another tool at your disposal is the value sketch. A value sketch for the purpose of this video is a freehand drawing that focuses on placement of the light, medium, and dark values in an image in order to gauge object placement. So it's really just a quick sketch that helps you confirm where you've placed your objects. Let's run through an example using our selected image. With your reference photo by your side, you begin your sketch and just work very generally. The focus is on the lights, the medium values, and also the dark darks. You're not looking at details, you're only looking at basic shapes. And remember, it does not need to be perfect. This isn't a formal sketch. I personally like to move all around the picture, as you can see. The process of making a value sketch helps you think through the composition. It helps you better judge object 
and value placement, and it just kind of acquaints your mind with the scene. Another way you can check your design is by ramping up the values so that you're only looking at the very lightest lights and the very darkest darks, basically black and white, no gray values. This design tool is actually called the Notan Design Concept. It originated with the Japanese and involves the balance of light and dark elements in a composition. We're talking about the relationship between positive and negative space, between a shape and its background. The human eye by nature is drawn to areas of strong value contrast, and so placement of these strong values will naturally be a part of how a composition leads the viewer's eye. Let's quickly summarize what we've discussed throughout the video.